Hello everyone, welcome back to Nutrition and Metabolism. I am Associate Professor Dr. Mahmoud Razif Shahril and today we will be exploring about body composition. First, let's look at the learning outcomes of this topic. By end of this lecture, you should be able to explain the components of body composition including fat mass, free fat mass and lean body mass. You should also be able to identify the methods of body composition assessment. Body composition comprises different organs with different composition. Body composition is not constant and is influenced by nutritional status. A normal distribution of tissues and fluid in the body is associated with immunity, high function and longevity. The body is modeled as a series of tissues and fluid compartments. Fat mass is the total amount of stored lipid in the body and consists of following types of fat. The first type of fat is subcutaneous fat which is located directly beneath the skin. Subcutaneous fat serves as an energy reserve and as insulation against outside cold. The second type of fat is visceral fat is located deeper within the body. Visceral fat serves as an energy reserve and as a cushion between organs. The fat cells are called adipocytes. There are various types of adipocytes and their conversion between adipocytes. We have white adipose tissue, beige adipose tissue, brown adipose tissue, and pink adipose tissue. So for each type of tissues, we have specific fats. So we have white adipocytes, beige adipocytes, brown adipocytes, and pink adipocytes. This beautiful slide shows the different colors of fat which is white, brown, beige, pink, and yellow, and also their function. A white adipocyte functions as an energy storage. It also functions as an insulation and protection. And sometimes it functions as endocrine organ regulating hunger and satiety, energy and glucose hemostasis, and hemostasis. The brown adipocyte functions as a non-shivering thermogenesis mediated by uncoupling protein 1, whereas the beige adipocyte functions as an induced by chronic coal exposure. It also has bifunctional where it acts as an energy, energy storage and heat production via upregulation of UCP1. We have pink adipocyte which evolves during pregnancy from wife adipose tissue. It also functions in milk secretion 
during lactation. And finally, yellow adipocyte has a distinct gene expression and lipid composition. Yellow adipocytes are resistant to caloric restriction induced lipolysis. However, the exact function is still unclear. Besides fat mass, we also have fat-free mass, also called as lean body mass. Fat-free mass is the total amount of non-fat or lean parts of the body. It consists of approximately 73% of water, 20% of protein, 6% of mineral, and around 1% of ash. Fat-free mass is further divided into body cell mass and extracellular mass. Body cell mass contains all the metabolically active tissues or living cells of the body, including muscle cells, organ cells, body cells, and immune cells. Body cell mass includes the living portion of fat cells, but not the stored fat lipids. Body cell mass also includes water inside living cells. This water is called intracellular water. The main electrolyte of intracellular water is potassium. Extracellular mass contains all the metabolically inactive or non-living parts of the body such as bone minerals and blood plasma. Extracellular mass includes water contained outside living cells. This water is called extracellular water. The main electrolyte of extracellular water is sodium. This figure summarizes the representation of the relationship of mass and water distribution. We can see that there are two main components, which is the fat-free mass and fat mass. Fat-free mass is further divided into body cell mass and extracellular mass. The metabolic tissue and intracellular water is a component of a body cell mass. Extracellular water and bone tissue are the components of extracellular mass. If we are interested to calculate the total body water, we should include both intracellular water and extracellular water. The relative proportion of compartment size depends on sex, age, hormones, pregnancy, growth and development, and also physical fitness. These are the factors determining compartment size. There are four factors affecting body weight and composition. The first factor is the genetics. Studies of identical twins provide some insight into the contribution of nature to body weight. Even when identical twins are raised apart, they tend to show similar weight gain pattern both in overall weight and in the body fat distribution. 
Researchers suggest that genes account for up to 40 to 70 percent of weight differences between people. The genes may be those that determine body type, metabolic rate, and the factors that affect hunger and satiety. The second factor that affects body weight and composition is environment. Environmental factors have important effects on what we eat. These factors may define when eating is appropriate, what is preferable to eat, and how much food should be eaten. Food choice are affected by numerous environmental factors, including food availability and preferences, food marketing, social networks, culture, education, lifestyle, health concerns, and income. The third factor affecting body weight and body composition is quite unique. The third factor is genetic and environment synergy. Even though genetic backgrounds have strong influence on body weight and composition, genes are not the destiny. Both nature and nurture are involved. Factors that encourage excess body, body fat storage and obesity are aging, female gender, high calorie diet, sedentary lifestyle, weight history, social and behavioral factors, certain medication, geographic location, and genetic characteristics. The fourth factor affecting body weight and composition is disease and disorder. Body weight and fatness can be affected by certain diseases, hormonal abnormalities, rare genetic disorders, and psychological disturbances. Cancer, AIDS, and anorexia nervosa tend to cause a person to have limited fat stores. Research has shown that body composition correlates directly to a continuum of health ranging from mortality and morbidity to immunity, longevity, high function, and athletic performance. As we can see here, the body cell mass is the lowest when the cell breaks down and the body cell mass is the highest among athletes and those who are fit. Why do we need to analyze the body composition? The purpose of body composition analysis is to monitor and improve function. For healthy adults, analysis of fat-free mass and body cell mass compartments can help maintain function, productivity, immunity, physical performance, and longevity. Body composition analysis lends itself to a number of modeling techniques. We have to choose any one or more of the following models depending upon the specific needs of our patients. Whether it is two compartment mass model, three compartment mass model, one compartment water model, two compartment water model, or a five compartment model. The most basic body model is the two compartment mass model. In the two compartment model, body composition can be divided into fat mass, fat free mass, or lean body mass. 
This two compartment mass model is useful when evaluating basic nutritional, fitness and weight management needs of patients. The body can also be divided into three compartments, that is, fat mass, body cell mass, and extracellular mass. This three compartment mod mass model, often used in support of nutritional counseling and monitoring changes associated with aging. The figure in this slide shows the difference between two compartment mass model and three compartment mass model. You can clearly see in the three compartment mass model, the fat free mass area is further divided into body cell mass and extracellular mass. We also have one compartment water model. The model accounts only for total body water. Total body water is wholly contained within fat-free mass, where 73% of fat-free mass is water. One compartment water model is a simple model used for evaluating basic hydration status of patients. The two compartment water model divides total body water into intracellular water and extracellular water. These two compartment water model often used for the assessment of fluid balance associated with the treatment or condition in a clinical settings. Examples are for hemodialysis patients and kidney disease patients. The figure in this slide shows the difference between one compartment water model and two compartment water model. Finally, the five compartment model provides us with a comprehensive picture of fluid and tissue compartment. The five compartment model consists of fat mass, metabolic tissue, intracellular water, extracellular water, and bone tissue. This figure shows the five compartment model which consists of fat mass, extracellular water, intracellular water, which sums up as a total body water and it also has metabolic tissue and bone tissue. This figure here shows the difference between body composition in different models. As we can see, there are specific differences between two compartment to three compartment and further to four compartment. As a general rule, the more compartments that are measured, the smaller the error in body composition estimates. This means that four component, four compartments model will have smaller error in body composition estimates compared to two compartment model. There is a distinct difference between body composition of a typical man and woman. As can be seen in this figure, men has only 15 to 20 percent of fat compared to women who has 20 to 30% of fat. 
men also will have higher protein composition compared to women. Let's look at the aspect of measuring body composition. Body composition can be measured through clinical examination, anthropometry, and biochemical assessment. These slides list down the common methods in measuring body composition. However, due to the investment of technology, there are a lot more other methods out there being studied and being validated. We have skin fold, bioelectric impedance analysis, hydrostatic underwater weighing, air displacement, platysmography, hydrometry, whole body DEXA scan, near infrared interactance, whole body counting total body potassium, 3D photonic scan, magnetic resonance imaging, total body electrical conductivity, computed tomography, and ultrasonography. In this lecture, I will focus on the first six methods which are commonly used in assessing body composition. The first method is skin fold. Skin fold method is the measurement of subcutaneous fat folds. Skin fold method is the most widely adopted field method for the assessment of body fat. It is based on the principle that fat is of a known density and by summing measurements of subcutaneous fat thickness across the body, total and regional fat can be estimated. There are population specific equations being used to derive estimates of person body fat. The second commonly used method is bioelectric impedance analysis or BIA. BIA is a frequently used method for estimating body composition based on a two component model. BIA measures impedance, which means the opposition to a small electrical current as it travels through the body's water pool. Bioelectrical impedance analysis measures a person's fat by measuring how fast a slight electrical current is conducted through the body, most of the time from the ankle to the wrist. This slide shows a collection of tools being used for the assessment of body composition using the principles of bioelectrical impedance analysis. A handheld bioelectrical impedance device only measures the body fat in the upper limb and estimates the body fat composition of the whole body. Whereas bioelectrical impedance analysis using foot scale only measures the body fat composition of the lower limb and estimates the 
whole body fat composition based on the measurement. Meanwhile, whole body impedance analysis only measures one side of the body, although it measures from foot to hand. It uses this figure to estimate the whole body fat composition. The best bioelectrical impedance analysis is the direct segmental multi-frequency bioelectrical impedance analysis which measures the actual body composition for all segments of the body. Moving on to the hydrostatic underwater weighing method. Hydrostatic underwater weighing is a form of densitometry, another being a displacement flat stomography which derives body composition from body density and body volume. This method uses the Archimedes principle of displacement, where this technique uses the difference between body weight underwater and body weight on land to estimate body composition. Subjects sit on the scale, expel the water from the lungs, and hold their breath and bend over at their waist. Once the subject is totally submerged, the underwater weight is recorded. Using this value, body volume can be calculated. This is how a hydrostatic underwater weighing method looks like. Air displacement flatismography is very much related to underwater weighing. The bot pot or P pot for infants measures the volume of air displaced by a person seated in a sealed device or small chamber of known volume for a few minutes. From this, body density derived from mass is divided by volume and can provide estimation of fat and fat-free mass. Air displacement flatismography uses Poisson's law to determine body volume. It is as accurate as hydrostatic or underwater weighing, but quicker and easier to perform. The figure here shows an example of how it looks when a person enters the small chamber of bot pot. Hydrometry or total body water by isotope dilution is a common method for the assessment of body composition at the molecular level. The method is based on the principle that water is distributed in all parts of the body except body fat. With measurement of total body water by isotope dilution, the amount of fat-free mass can be estimated using hydration factors. Body fat mass is the difference between body weight and fat-free mass. During deuterium dilution method, a known bolus 
dose of deuterium oxide is given orally to the participant. This isotope mixes with the body water pool. Biological fluids such as usually plasma, saliva or urine are sampled at baseline and after dose equilibrium. Finally, we have whole body DEXA scan. DEXA or dual energy X-ray absorptiometry is an imaging technique that provides whole body and regional estimates of the three main body components, which is fat, lean soft tissues and bone mineral mass. Some software can estimate visceral fat from the andriot or abdominal region and this is being validated only among adults. This figure shows you the DEXA machine. Since there are several methods or devices to measure body composition, how do we decide which method to choose? If your aim is to determine the effectiveness of an intervention, for example, weight loss or, or weight gain, or to track body composition goals, you need a reliable method. To assess injury risk, health risk, or determine weight management goals, you will need an accurate method. This graph shows the relationship between reliability and accuracy of the body composition measuring tools. We can see that bioelectrical impedance analysis has a moderate reliability but a very low accuracy. Bot pot, on the other hand, together with skin folds, have higher reliability and better accuracy. The best method and most of the time is used as a gold standard are the DEXA machine and underwater weighing which has the highest reliability and accuracy. It is also good to be aware that all methods to measure body composition have advantages and disadvantages. The table here shows the advantages and disadvantages of DEXA bioelectrical impedance analysis, skin folds, and bot pot. We have reached the end of this lecture. To recap, in this lecture, you have learned to explain the components of body composition, that is, fat mass, free fat mass, and lean body mass. You also have learned to identify the methods of body composition assessment. I hope you did enjoy the lecture. Thank you.